Hello, my name is Casey Dubold and I am the Registrar for Blackwater Community School. Today I will be walking through the new online registration process we have for Blackwater Community School students. To find the link for online registration, please visit the Blackwater Community School website at www.bwcs.k12.az.us. So if I click on my browser, I already have it pulled up, but again, it is bwcs.k12.az.us. And it'll bring you to this main screen here. Now, if I go to my enrollments tab, that will bring me to the information in regards to enrolling your child. To get to the registration online, if you scroll down here to this red print, you'll see the information we need. Click here for online registration or for online enrollment. If enrolling from outside the school, so this is what parents are going to use if they are working from their home, from their workplace, basically anywhere from except for the school. This number two link is if you don't feel comfortable doing the online um, enrollment on your own, you would like some help. Uh, go us give us a, a call at the school and we can get you set up um, in our tech lab for one of our registration kiosks. But for at-home purposes, we are gonna use this link right here. Uh, please keep in mind this is going to work best with a real computer or laptop. So please make sure that you are not trying to do this on a cellular device. It is not going to be supported very well. When I click that link, it's going to bring us to this online registration um, page, we're going to go ahead and fill it out according to its prompts. Uh, it will not let you move forward until all of these red asterisk uh, fields have been filled. For today's purposes, I am going to be Fred Flintstone. Uh, the year is already going to be in here, so you don't have to change that. I do need to put my email though. If you do not have an email, address, you will need to create um, an account before you can use this online process. So I'm going to put in my email address and then I'm going to verify that yes, this is the right email address for me. If my student has been enrolled with our school in the past, I will go ahead and click this. Today I'm going to assume that I have a brand new child, so I'm not going to click that. I'm going to leave that blank. And then I'm gonna come down here to the security catch and I'm going to put in the code that it is asking for. When I click begin registration, it will go to a message saying, uh, thank you for starting the online registration process. The email address you entered will receive an email shortly. That email will contain a link that will lead you to the official registration page. Thank you. So from there, I can go ahead and exit out of that, and I need to go into my um, mail. Now I've already got it up to save some time. If I click on that email that came through, it will go ahead and show me um, this welcome to online registration. This comes from register at bwcs.k12.uz.us. Dear Fred, Fred Flintstone, welcome to the Blackwater Community School Online Registration Part 1. Before you begin, please gather the following. It asks for household information, parent information, student information, and emergency contact information. So you want to make sure that you have all the phone numbers, addresses, and contacts um, ready to enter as you go through this. It'll just save you some time if you make sure that all of those are correct that you have the correct spellings, um, and that you know what those are when you prepare to do this. Um, if it's a new student, we are going to need um, their birth certificate on file, their CDIB if they have one, um, any legal documents that are applicable. So if they have a power of attorney, a guardianship, um, anything like that that we need to have on file, um, those can all be emailed to this register at bwcs.k12.az.us or they can be faxed to the school. They can also be brought into the school. It's whatever is 
easiest for you, um, as well as their health and medication or yeah, medication information. So immunizations, um, prescriptions that need to be taken during school hours, things like that. Um, this regularly shows up as a hyperlink. For some reason, it is showing up as a link. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then go and open a new tab. I'm gonna paste the tab or the link in that tab and it is going to bring me to this welcome uh, screen right here. So um, this application number is one that is going to be tied to my application. If I stop in the middle of my application for some reason and I'm having difficulties, you guys can give us this information um, in the office and we should be able to look it up and help you. Maybe you submit too early or something happens, just let us know with this uh, application number. Also, if you have to stop in the middle, uh, you can return to this email, use this link again, and it will return you to wherever you stopped within the um, application. So we're going to go ahead and click begin. And it is going to bring us to household information. So household information refers to the house in which the child resides. Um, we're going to want the primary phone number to be the most dependable number for this house. So if that is um, the cell phone number, then it's a cell phone number. If it's a home landline, then it's that that we want to put. But we want to put the most dependable phone that there is. I'm going to go ahead and click next and enter a home address. So say that I live um, at 1234 Example Street. So if it's not in here, I'm going to go ahead and continue to go through these prompts. 1234 Example Street has been in here before, so maybe I have an older child um, that has gone to school here before, or somebody in my house has, has somehow been enrolled with us before. It may very well pop up. If that's the case, you can go ahead and click OK, and it will pre-populate it for you. Um, now say that I lived on East Example Street. My directions need to go right here. They're pretty self-explanatory, but basically your street number goes here. Your um, direction should go here. Your street name right here. Um, if I lived on, well, and actually, this is a perfect example. This should only say example. So somebody had put this in wrong. This is not actually how that should be. It should say East Example. Street should go right here. So if I scroll down, here's street. Um, if I had an apartment number, it would go right here. And then my city, my state, and my zip code is all I need to put here. And you can see it at the bottom, so you can see if it's entered correctly, one, two, three, four, East Example Street, apartment 555, fake Arizona, 55555. When I'm satisfied that this looks correct, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say next. Mailing address. If I have the same mailing address as um, my physical address, then I can go ahead and just leave this as is. If I have, say, a P.O. box, I would unclick this and then I would need to put um, my mailing address. So if it's a post office box, I would click this and then I would enter under street number, that P.O. box. So maybe I have 555 as my, as my P.O. box. That hasn't been used within the system before, so I'm going to go ahead and have to put in the additional information. Um, so just follow the prompts. Anything with a red asterisk is required, and it will not let you move on until you complete all of these fields. So now I have my post office box, the number associated, my city, state, and zip code, and again below it's going to show that entry, so just make sure that that's accurate and correct. When you've done that, you can click save and continue. 
Okay, here you want to add any parent or guardian, including yourself in this area. I'm going to say okay. Now, because I'm the one that started the application, my information is here. It's up to you if you want to include that middle name. If you are a senior, a junior, a first, second, third, um, you may want to go ahead and include your middle initial um, or better um, to add the suffix here so that we don't confuse you with another person that's maybe in the system for another reason. It is going to ask for your birth date. Um, so remember that it needs to be month, month, date, date, year, year, year. So 01, 01 dash 2000 would be an example of that birth date that it will accept. For this purpose, Fred Flintstone is a male. Now below it'll say, please check this box if this person lives at the address listed below. I'm going to say that yes, I do in fact live at this address. Keep in mind this is what we're saying is the household address for the students that I'm going to be adding. So if I don't live with my child most of the time, I'm going to say that it's not and I will have to go ahead and add this information. Um, I'm going to say that I do live at this place and I'm going to say next. Now it is going to ask me for the contact information that is related to Fred Flintstone. I have to add at least one phone number, but I can also add a work phone number and another uh, phone number if they're applicable. It already put in my email address um, because it's tied to my application. But it did not put the household phone number here because it doesn't know if that is one of my phone numbers or not. So I'm going to go ahead and just add the same phone number. Um, then over here, contact preferences. Do you want to be contacted in an emergency, in high priority situations, in attendance issues, behavior issues, general um, information, and by the teacher? In the teacher portal. So this will be important when it comes to using a parent portal, uh, which will be set up at the end of your application process. If I'm satisfied with all of this, I'm going to save and continue. So currently, the only parent and guardian that I have listed is um, Fred Flintstone. If I would like to add a secondary parent, I'm going to come down here and add new parent or guardian. If not, I'll save and continue. I will go ahead and add a second parent. Uh, we'll see. Oops. My caps long is on, so check that. Wilma. Flintstone. Oops. Went. Stone. Um, again, it will require the birth date of any parent guardian. And it will require the gender, the sex of that person. Again, Please verify that they live in this household. If they do not, you will unclick this and you will put in their information. There is an option to not provide an address for this parent. However, we do ask that you try to include as much information as possible. So if you have access to that address, if they live elsewhere, please go ahead and um, add that. There is other areas where you can say if they have contact with the student. So for this purpose, please add any information that you have. I'm going to say that she does live in the same house and I'm going to say next. Um, maybe we don't have a cell phone for her or a work phone, but we do have another phone for her. So we will go ahead and put that. And Wilma does not have an email, just Fred. So in that case, I will say no email. If she had one, I would go ahead and add that as well. Now notice because she does not have an email, 
she also does not have these contact preferences show up because those are for emailing purposes. So she doesn't have an email set up, therefore she will not receive any of those notifications. When I'm done, I'm going to say save and continue. One thing about parents and guardians is we do require anybody listed as a parent or guardian can prove it with some form of documentation. That means that they are both on the birth certificate or um, there's legal documentation, whether that's a guardianship decree or a power of attorney, something to indicate that these people have the rights to make decisions on behalf of this child. So please do not put anybody here that is not truly a guardian. Um, no boyfriends, no girlfriends, no um, significant others. We don't want um, step parents unless they are true step parents, um, adoption, things of that nature. Otherwise, please only put people who have legal guardianship um, and documentation that can prove that. If we have all of our guardians, we are going to hit save and continue. Emergency contacts. So we will have to have at least one emergency contact, but no more than eight. Um, any emergency contact is allowed to pick up um, students in an emergency situation. Um, so if there's a health issue, an accident, or if we are unable to get a hold of anybody to pick up the child at the end of the day, um, or if they're sick, these people will be contacted uh, to do so. You are giving the rights to us to do that. Um, and once they have been picked up and are in those custodies, they are no longer um, under our care. So just make sure whoever you choose for these people, uh, they are people that you trust with your child. We will not release students to these uh, emergency contacts unless we have authority um, from parents on a regular basis. So if parents are um, running late and they've asked an emergency contact to pick up their child, they do need to let the office know. The only time we release to emergency contacts without uh, parental uh, consent first is if it is an emergency situation or if we are legally obligated to do so. Um, so for this, I'm going to go ahead and put Barney. Rubble. Oops, that's the middle name. Rubble. It will require a first and last name. Again, if you know that it's a junior or a senior, I would suggest putting the suffix, um, and then it will ask if, if this person is a male or a female. We are going to go ahead and click Next when we are satisfied. Please do not use um, nicknames and do your best to spell the, their names correctly um, to avoid confusion. Uh, we do require that they have at least one phone number on file with us. And if they have additional, you are welcome to add those. If they have an email that you would like tied to us, go ahead and throw that in there as well. But please ask permission uh, before you put in a bunch of um, personal information on your contacts. Make sure that they are okay with the school having the information and using it to contact them. Uh, verification. Does this person live in this house? If it is a grandmother that lives in the house or something along those lines, you can go ahead and click that. Um, you can put in an address for them if they have it, but this is not necessary for um, our purposes, not when it comes to emergency contacts. So that is kind of to your own discretion. When I'm satisfied, I'm going to say save and continue. Barney does not live at that address, so I'm just going to say save and continue. It is going to list my emergency contact. If I have a new emergency contact, I'd go ahead and continue. Um, if I forgot something or I realized, shoot, I spelt that wrong, I can go edit, review, and I can change it. 
When I'm done, I say save and continue, and it'll bring me back to that main screen. When I am done with my emergency contacts, I will go ahead, save and continue, which will bring me to student information. Yellow indicates that somebody is missing some kind of information. So if you get done and your child is yellow, then you have missed something that you need to go back into. I'm going to add a new student. You can add as many students as you have. So this is really handy for um, families that have multiple students. You only have to put all of this information in one time for um, your students. You will have to add a student each time, but the emergency contacts and the parent information, household information will be put towards each child. Um, unless specified otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my child's name. If they have a legal last, middle name, please include that. I don't know that Pebbles Flintstone did, but today her middle name is Grace. And her last name is um, Flintstone. This last name must also um, match the, well, the whole name needs to match the birth certificate unless uh, you have legal documentation that the name has been changed and is different. If they are a junior, senior, first, second, third, please also use this suffix. Then it will ask the sex of the child, male or female. She is a female. It will ask for the birth date. So we are just going to say that she was January 1st of 2016. And it asks the enrollment grade. She is going to be in kindergarten, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. That is all of her personally identifiable information um, that is required. Now, we do ask that you put their tribal affiliation. So if she is, for these purposes, a Gila River Indian um, community member, I'm going to go ahead and put Grick. And I need to put her enrollment number if she is already enrolled. It asks below if the student's number is the student or the parent. I'm going to say that it is hers. It asks if the student has a cell phone number or an email. She is a kindergartner. She does not. If they have that, go ahead and put that in there. The district that your student resides in, um, are they in Blackwater, Sacatone, Sacatone Flats? Um, where are they located at? You could put the number or you can put Blackwater or you could put both, like in this case right here, um, if they live off of the reservation, you can put NA um, right there, but it does have to be filled in to move forward. It has a red asterisk. Um, and then AM and PM bus stop. So Route 1 and Route 2 are Blackwater stops. Route 3 is Sacatone Flats. Route 4 is Sacatone. And then Route 5, 6 is the Boys and Girls Club. So I'm going to say that she is an office drop off and pick up. That means I'm going to bring her to the school in the morning and I'm going to pick her up in the evening. If she was going to catch the bus, say I lived on East Dove Road, that is where she would need to um, have, have that clicked. But for these purposes, I'm going to say that I'm going to pick up and drop her off. This can be changed later with the office if need be. Um, but we do need this information so that we can make our bus lists. So that does have to be filled out. If you have questions, go ahead and call the office. I'm going to click next. It's going to ask my race and ethnicity for my child. Um, so I'm going to say, no, she is not. For these purposes, I'm going to say that she is American Indian or Alaska Native. Um, if your child is something else, go ahead and list that and then click next. Last year school, did she go somewhere last year? I'm going to say that she went to Gila River. Um, 
Oh, child. Head start. Sorry, head start. Whatever, head start. And I would need to put in their address or their phone number. I'm going to say next. And that'll bring me to relationships. So this is asking, what is Fred Flintstone in relation to Pebbles Flintstone? I'm going to say that she is, or that he is her father, and that Wilma is her mother. You'll notice there is also parent guardian, state guardian, stepfather, stepmother. You are a parent guardian if there is um, a legal documentation saying so. You, as a parent, should not use state guardian. Um, and again, stepfather and stepmother should only be used if there's legal documentation proving that they have legal guardianship over the child. So, once we have that established, do, is this person a guardian? If they are, they should be clicked. Um, are they mailing? Guardianship, this is also, they're a parent, do they have their guardianship? which if they're living in the same house as them, they definitely should. Um, but maybe we're just saying, you know, so you are aware, Fred Flintstone is her father. However, he does not have guardianship. Um, you would put no relationship over here. That would also just block him out. Um, but you also need to have proof that that person does not have guardianship um, if you are going to claim that. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. They are both guardians, they need to have mailing, uh, they both need access to the parent portal and to um, messenger. We're gonna go ahead and give all of the parents the rights, which is the norm. Um, it's not often that we would see where one parent just does not want access. So defaulted, they will all have access. Then you're gonna do contact sequence. So do we get a home a, um, a hold of mom or dad first? I'm going to say that Fred is contact number one, so maybe he works from home, mom works, um, or whatever the case is. Whoever is going to be the most likely to answer to come get the child, that is who you wanna put as contact sequence one, um, and the other one is two. You do have to have a contact sequence to move forward. Um, I'm going to say down here, next, and it will bring me to my relationships, the emergency contacts. So it has the contacts that I've entered. It's going to ask for my relationship. So is this person an emergency contact? Um, a grandmother, a grandfather? Um, are they a sibling, an older sibling? If they are, they must be 18 or older uh, to sign the child out, um, stepmother, stepfather, uh, TSS caseworker, whatever the case may be. If it's an aunt, uncle, friend of the family, um, godmother, godfather, anything like that, cousin, that will just be under the umbrella of emergency contact. And then we need a contact sequence for them as first. So if you have multiple of them, you need to decide in what order you would like us to call them. I only have Barney, mom and dad are one and two, so that makes him three. And I'm going to click next. Now, if your child has a health or medical condition, you can go ahead and add a condition that you want us aware of here. If they don't, you can click this and move forward. Um, but maybe my child has allergies and I want um, you don't know about that. I can put allergies, comments and instructions. I can say allergies when the dust blows um, and kind of give some context or context there. If they have multiple conditions, I can also um, add a secondary, um, you know, maybe um, other, we have um, some asthma. I think I saw that on the list. Oh wait, just kidding, asthma's there. Um, so asthma when running. Okay, so the, those are there. We'll know about those when they show up. Um, medications, do they have any medications? If not, we're gonna say no medications. 
If there's a medication that you would like us to be aware of, go ahead and tell us here what that is. Maybe they use albuterol. Um, where is it taken? At home. When is it taken? As needed. Uh, taken for asthma. And then we're aware of that medication. Um, if you're unsure, you can always give us a call and we can get you in touch with the nurse to discuss um, what needs to be filled out here. So I'm going to hit save and continue. And then this child is complete. She's not showing up yellow. She's showing up with a green mark, which means that she has been um, completed. Now, if she's my only child, I'm going to hit save and continue. If I have a second child, I will go back through, add a new student and start the process again. I don't, so I'm going to click cancel. Yes, I'm sure I want to cancel. And I'm going to hit save and continue. You must submit your application by clicking the following button. So I'm going to submit my part one. Please note, prior to submitting your application, you may verify all of the data you have entered by going back. So I can click up here and go back to the specific information. Maybe I thought of a second emergency contact that I would like to add. Um, I can click here and I can click this application summary PDF, which will bring up a document with the information that I just entered to make sure that it's accurate and true. When I'm satisfied with that, I can save that. I can print that. I can do what I would like to. That is in a new window, so I can go ahead and just exit out of it when I'm happy. It's going to bring me right back here and I'm going to say submit part one. It's going to ask me again, am I sure that I would like to submit this registration? Yes, I am, so I'm going to click confirm. And again, it's gonna give me the option to download that application summary that I just showed you. Uh, if I wanna do that, I can. If not, I'm gonna read this next part. Please click here to complete part two of online registration. All completed and required documents can be emailed to register at bwcs.k12.az.us. What that's going to do, um, it, or what that refers to is again, any birth certificate, CDIB, immunization records, legal documentation that needs to be submitted to the school can be submitted um, to this register at bwcs.k12.az.us email. We will accept photos as well. However, they do need to be um, legible or clear, readable um, for us to accept those. I'm going to go ahead and click here. And this is going to bring me back to the enrollments tab of the um, website. So down below where we found our link is the additional information that we need to complete our student's application. So here's a help document that tells you what you need to complete. New students need to complete the new student form. It is a fillable form. However, in order to use the signing, you will need to download it in Adobe. Um, if you download it on a web browser, you are not able to sign, so you will still need to print those um, and sign them or um, have the school print them and you can come in and sign them, whatever is easiest. Um, but the only way to sign those with um, the fillable form is Adobe. Returning students have a shorter fillable form because we do have some of your information from last year on file. All students need to complete the school health services packet. Unfortunately, that is um, a printable only packet. So if you don't have access to a printer, you're welcome to come to the school and fill one of those out, but that must be returned before um, you are able to have your child start. Um, and then lastly, the student resources PDF is helpful information to kind of give you um, it gives you the school calendar for the upcoming year. It also gives you the um, internet policy and our technology policy, um, our Blackwater uniform requirements, and then the student handbook. 
So if I click on the new student registration, according to that health doc or that help document, it will bring up all of the required documents for our new students. So I still need to complete this um, for my enrollment, but we have your main information and we can get started on that enrollment for your child. This can be emailed to us, it can be faxed to us, um, or you can bring it into the school. So if you open that document, it will bring in or bring up the second part of that child's enrollment. So for a new student, we need to have a request for student records on file so that we can um, request records from the previous school. We will have to have a float on file for your child. This is a one time um, only thing. So if your child is returning again, it will not be in that returning student packet. We do have to have this Ed 506 form on file, again, one time only, so this is only for new students. We have to have the proof of Arizona residency, again, new students only. We should already have that on file for anybody who has been at the school in a previous year. All students will need to fill out the language department or development form in the student services questionnaire to the best of your ability. Um, we need an instructional equipment checkout agreement on file as well as your uniform agreement. And photo and activity agreement form. This is important because it allows us to take photos um, if we have events or anything like that. So if you would like to allow us, please go ahead and click those that you are okay with. Um, as well as any field trips to the multi-purpose building or ballpark. If you are interested in getting involved with the school, please also fill out this um, parent involvement survey. If you are not, you can go ahead and move past that. We do ask that this clothing order form be filled out and returned so that we can provide um, the first uniform for your student. And the handbook policy form, or policy form is also included in this packet. Again, that handbook is found under the student resources. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please feel free to call us at 520-215-5859 and we will do our very best to help. Thank you.